Magician Alexander Herman used to say that conjurers are born, not made. And in his case, it was certainly true. Herman was the greatest star of magic of the late 19th century. For a period of time, he was the most famous magician in America and maybe even in the world. His look became a standard image of a magician for years to come. The story of his life can teach us a lot about what it takes and what it means to be a great magician and a great artist. My name is Alex Romanov, I'm a magician and a historian. Today I am really excited to tell you the story of Herman the Great and talk about the secrets of his success. This episode is produced in partnership with The Vanishing Inc. Let's start! Samuel Herman, the father of Alexander, had 16 kids, and the age difference between his youngest son, Alexander, and the eldest son, Compars, was 28 years. Compars, the elder brother of Alexander, learned magic from his father and made an impressive career in show business as Carl Herman. He became a star, and by a star, I mean what we today call A-list celebrity. When Carl performed in the New York Academy of Music in 1861, all tickets were sold, and more than 3,000 people still waited in front of the doors, hoping to get inside. Also, Carl was a kidnapper. Let me explain. Carl saw that his young brother Alexander had a passion for magic, which his parents did not support. So he kidnapped 8 years old Alexander and took him on a tour, including a journey to St. Petersburg in Russia, where Alexander assisted him in a performance for the Tsar of Russia, Alexander II. And what did you do when you were 8 years old? Since that time, Alexander knew that he wanted to be a magician. But for everyone, he was just the younger brother of the great Carl Herman. Carl was ready to train and promote Alexander, but only if he remained under his patronage. This was not what the young magician wanted. When he was in his teens, he quit working for his brother as an assistant, putting at risk his promising career. He went his own way, without money, without magic props, determined to prove to his brother and to everyone else that he could make it on his own. And he did. In his 40s, at the height of his fame, Alexander Herman made between 70 and 100 thousand dollars a year performing magic, which would be about one and a half million dollars today. He had his private railway car for travels, his own yacht, Fra Diavolo, and a big mansion in New York. But most importantly, in the last quarter of the 19th century, Alexander Herman's name was the synonym for magic in the United States. And so was his image. People described the devil differently throughout history. In the 19th century, the devil did not look like this anymore. At that time, one could easily picture the devil as a cool guy dressed like a stylish <laughs> London dandy. And if there was anyone who looked exactly like this, then it was Alexander Herman. Herman was always compared to his satanic majesty by the press. He was aware of it and played with this idea in his posters all the time. But it was not just about his cool posters. Alexander managed to do something that many magicians fail to achieve – create a perfect stage character. On the one hand, he looked like Mephistopheles, and it already gave him authority. On the other hand, he had incredible charisma. The audience loved him for his sense of humor, his style, his charming French accent. When he was on stage, he had everyone's attention and he could keep it for hours while performing just sleight-of-hand tricks. There are two secrets of how he managed to create this powerful on-stage presence. First, he was a pro. His manual dexterity has never been excelled, wrote a British newspaper after his death. 
Herman was confident both on and off stage because he had something that no one could take from him – his skill. He did not have to be afraid of others coping his act or losing his magic apparatus because he knew that he was simply the best. And he did not need huge boxes to create a sensation. And second, his character was not just a part that he played on stage. It was him. Herman never stepped out of his role. He was a magician 24-7. He could be at the market, take an egg, break it and produce a coin, and repeat it until a crowd gathered around him. He could be in a, in a streetcar, and when the conductor wanted to collect money, Herman would say that he already paid and then produce a coin from the conductor's pocket. Even during his wedding ceremony, Herman apologized that he did not have the money to pay for it and then produced a roll of paper banknotes from the mayor's beard. In every town, dozens of reporters followed Herman because they knew that they would have a cool story. He was able to have these tricks occur so naturally that it didn't look like a rehearsed performance. Mysterious things just happened around the magician. Even at home, Herman looked like a magician. He welcomed his guest in his red Turkish gown and then sat in a chair surrounded by oriental luxuries and his countless animals, puffing clouds of smoke and telling incredible stories about his magical travels and adventures. At the age of 32, Alexander married Adelaide Scarsese, a beautiful dancer who became his lifetime companion and partner on stage. Together they created one of the greatest magic shows of the 19th century. They performed spectacular illusions such as the cremation of Adelaide, dangerous feats such as a bullet catch or fun tricks such as the inexhaustible bottle, during which Alexander was running around the theater with a single bottle in his hand and pouring guests any drink that they asked for. His last performance was a charity show for 750 students of the industrial school. After the show, Herman invited all of them to his theater show for free next Wednesday. Following the Wednesday performance, he went to a local club for dinner with some officials. As usual, Herman was the center of attention as he was showing tricks and telling his stories. Well, we ought to enjoy these things while we are living, because after we die, we are soon forgotten, he said to his wife after the night came to an end. He died the next morning of a heart attack, at the age of 52, on his private train car that was flying at 50 miles an hour through winter snow, bringing the amazing show of Alexander Herman to the next town. His wife Adelaide carried on with the show. Later, she became the most popular female magician in history. But more about this next time. If Herman got his powers from the devil, as some people said, then he outsmarted him. Because he used these powers for good only. He always was kind to his friends, his colleagues and his spectators, and always ready to turn the most ordinary situation into a unique magical experience that everybody would remember forever. To impart happiness both on and off stage was his religion, wrote his wife Adelaide later in her memoirs. Shortly after the death of Alexander, American writer Albert Payne wrote a poem about him. In this poem, the magician Saul meets Saint Peter and has a conversation with him in front of the heaven's gates. Saint Peter started. What? Herman the Great? Then why do you pause? said he. Your magic might open the firmest gate with never a word from me. Not so, Saint Peter, the shadow replied. My magic was but of earth. It was well enough on the other side, but here it has lost its worth. But the good saint answered with earnest air, I pray you will have no fear, for you practiced another magic there that counts as well up here. You offered hope to the weary heart in charity's sacred name. You brightened the world with a blessed art that counts up here the same. 
Thank you for watching. Stories like that of Alexander Herman make me really proud of magic as a performing art. And I believe there is something to learn from Herman for each of us, not only about magic, but about life. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.